All right, 16.1 is about the introduction to the functions. The first thing that we can see over here is the graphs of the function. The graph of the function requires, first of all, a function table in which the input uh, or your independent variable is taken by your choice. And as a result, you get the output or the y value as a result of the relation of the function. Okay, uh, that and the function notation, the f of x and etc etc what does that mean okay this thing and then we have again the graphs of function etc etc and there's one very important thing which is the vertical line test we're gonna look into that on the board as well okay uh, exercise 16 1 it says in each of the following question 1 says in each of the following state whether the set of ordered pair represent a function or not okay so uh, I'm thinking that uh, first of all we start with the exercise question and then I can explain them to you one by one okay okay so this is question number one we got it on the board now each of the following state whether the set of uh, ordered pair represents a function or not for a set of ordered pairs to be functions or not you can also check it out in the the previous lectures of function but for this specific series from the signpost mathematics I'm gonna repeat that for you that for the ordered pairs, for the set of ordered pairs to, the, to be a function, you have to make sure that your domain is not repeated. Domain uh, is your input values, the first number in your ordered pairs. Let's take the first part, A, 1, 5, 2, 6, 3, 7, 4, 8, right? Okay, now look at that. Uh, the domain in each case is different correct so this will be called a function the thing is when you have ordered pairs and one input one input has multiple outputs okay more than one output output one and output two they both have one input then what happens the main is repeated okay or in other words the input for each one of them is not unique right on the contrary we can have two inputs input 1 and input 2 mapped to one output output why because in each of this if I write it down in the form of ordered pair it will look like input 1 and output and this for this one it will be input 2 and output for each one of them the uh, input is unique contrary to that if I write down the ordered pair for the first one this one I will get something like input comma output 1 and the second ordered pair will be input comma output 2 look at that the input is repeated the domain is repeated the input is no longer unique anymore so let's get rid of that okay uh, let's pick another question for which I can tell you if uh, it is actually not a function uh, yeah look at example D example D if you look at that the one is repeated right one is mapping to three as well as to four we got two outputs with the same input these two outputs three and four they don't have unique inputs anymore All right so they, they will not be representing a function anymore so you can practice uh, the questions using these concepts question number two says uh, in each of the following diagrams an input value is joined to an output value by an arrow state whether each diagram represents a function now if you look at that this one has unique input this one has unique input this one has unique input two inputs matching to one output correct this one has one input that and one input one input as minus one and one input as plus one both inputs are unique again in this case you can write it down in the form of ordered pair as well look input is not repeated or I can say the output has unique input in this case minus one and one both have the input 1 correct minus 2 and plus 2 both have the input 4 
Now this cannot be called a function because what happens? The input is not unique anymore. The domain is repeated. So that will not be a function. Right? Now question number three is somehow related to question number two. So I'm going to leave it over there. As you can see, question three says, if the arrows in the diagram of question two are reversed, okay, state whether each diagram represents a function or not. So we're going to reverse the arrows. For the first one, we're going to get a situation like so. We have on the input size, we're going to get two, four, six, and on the output side, we're going to get one, two, three. And this is how you can represent it as the arrows are reversed. The arrows will be pointing this way. This one will be serving as your input. This one will be serving as your output or that way you can write it down. Again, the input is 2, the output is 1. The input is 4, the output is 2. The input is 6, the output is 3. Each output has unique input, correct? The main is not repeated, that means, okay? Or the input is not repeated. Simple, you can always remember one simple thing that each output must have unique inputs. That's pretty much it. Okay, let's look at the second one now. We have minus 1 and 1 on the input side and 2 and minus 2 on the input side is 1 and 4 but on the output sides. Now they are going to be on the input sides. Okay, and these four numbers will be on the output side. Minus 1, 1, 2, minus 2. Okay, 1 will be mapped to both minus 1 and 1. And 4 will be mapped to both 2 and minus 2. Now let's get rid of that. I have now 1 minus 1, 1, 1, 4, 2, 4, minus 2. Now look, the domain is repeated. The input is not unique anymore. It was a function earlier, but when I reversed the domain and range, it's no longer a function anymore. Contrary to that, this wasn't a function. But if you reverse it, try it by yourself. If you reverse the arrows, it will turn into a function. Okay?